So what we want to talk about today are really just a couple of different tools to achieve the same end, uh, which is thinking about reproducible research. So, um, and I guess what you might broadly call literate programming. So the idea is to, to be creating a document that's a synthesis of not only your uh, data analysis plans, so uh, using code to document the kinds of things that you want to do uh, with your data analysis, but also the code itself and the output uh, on top of that. So I mentioned that, that those of you who've been working with, uh, with R and statistical methods more generally for a long time will have strategies that you use for putting documents together that will be a, a blend of all of these things. So the decisions that you made as to what you want to do, how you actually went about doing it, um, and the output. So this, in many ways, the, one of the prime functions of using something like Sweep or Knit R is to cut down on double handling of your outputs. So essentially you can have one file that will include all of the information that you have. You know where all of your code's sitting and that it's pointing to all the data and so on and so forth. So uh, integrating and simplifying things uh, somewhat. So how do they work? Sweeve and Nita in a lot of ways do exactly the same thing. Um, we'll go into some of the technical details of how they differ a little bit later on. But in terms of their overall structure, um, we're really programming with a mixture of R code, as you would hopefully expect, this being an R users group, uh, LaTeX commands. Just out of interest, how many people here have used LaTeX before? Okay, that's good, a lot of people. Um, if you haven't, uh, the good news is, is that actually with relatively minimal overhead, you can get some pretty nifty um, sectioning commands and so on under your belt to be able to put together the structure of a document um, pretty quickly. Um, and then the last part, which is uh, specific to NITAR or SWEEP, are the different, uh, what we might call, uh, package options um, that we might specify for a particular chunk of code. So knowing how to set particular commands to set the size of a figure in a particular section of the document, uh, say to be three by three inches. Um, so generally speaking, files are structured when you're, when you're creating the file to, to run. Files are structured uh, as a LaTeX-specific uh, header, and from my perspective as someone who you know, switched from using Word to LaTeX for my PhD thesis about 10 years ago now, uh, wrote one paper at LaTeX and once it was accepted got told please send us a Word copy of your document for copy editing and didn't really get back to LaTeX for quite a few years after that. This is, this is the hard bit for me to get my head around again is the LaTeX edit um, aspect. Thankfully there are some relatively simple things that you can do, especially using R Studio, that will make your life a lot easier in terms of getting that header. Uh, part right. So once you've got the LaTeX specific header, 
basically everything else that might happen between the start and the end of your document could be considered to be a big latex um, document. So you could just type completely plain text in there with line breaks and no other bells and whistles, and what you get out of the other end will be just a nicely formatted uh, uh, textual document. So where we start to get into the more useful stuff is these interspersed uh, R code chunks and latex segments. So alternating between uh, descriptions about the kinds of things we're doing in our analysis uh, and the actual output, the code and the output itself, um, formatted in line. So here is a, a very simple example. This is technically in Sweeve. Um, quite sure which uh, which screen is best uh, to, to look at. Oh, this one here, just because I'm working on this. So, um, so you can see the header bits at the top. Uh, so the most basic header that you can have for this kind of file is literally just two lines. Document class, so it's a LaTeX um, header command telling you that this is an article uh, as a type of document, and then begin document. So everything between begin document and end document here, you could just literally have some text in there and that would, uh, that would compile as a PDF file. The Sweebox uh, option is needed for uh, running Sweep, but I'll come back to that a little bit later on. So what we have underneath that is, um, first of all, just a line of text, uh, so just some nonsense there, and then between these little Greater than less than equal signs here, and the at sign down here, which probably doesn't show up very well, is some R code. So in this instance, just one plus one, so I'm going to get into the, the details of the statistical side of things too quickly. In our studio, thankfully, if you click a button, you do get some useful information uh, out of it. So at a simple level, in terms of getting a document up and running, if you literally just have some R code that you're sticking in that R code uh, chunk section, you can just get your output really dumped very quickly to a, to a PDF. So if you just want a working document of this is all the stuff I did today and I don't want to have to worry about how I'm sticking it all together. I mean, it's a very simple use of uh, this kind of thing, but it's actually quite useful from a day-to-day -day, um, point of view to be able to do that. Um, so in terms of when this gets to be a little bit more useful than this, when you, have, um, when you want a single file that's documenting your whole uh, data analysis uh, process, so from strategy through to execution and uh, conclusions, for instance, it's really handy. So I've used it actually going through my files to check on what I've done, not as often as I thought I had over the last um, year or so, but I've used it a lot in a consulting role at the medical school, so if people have a research question for us, it's a nice way to just kind of get everything in one file that can be easily sent um, to, to the person who's asking for, for some data analysis. And the main advantage really is in being able to rerun things that you've run so if you're working on some iterative data analysis where you might do some analysis, send it back to someone and say, hey, well, I got through to the point where I was just looking at some cross-tabulations of variable A and B, and it looks like there are all these people under the age of 12 who say they've got three kids, so you know what's going on with your data cleaning. Um, you can update your raw data file, for instance, and then just run your script again. Um, also, if you're running the same kind of analysis, so if you're in a reporting environment where you're running the same kind of analysis, uh, lots and lots, um, then it's a nice structure for dealing with that would be relatively update the raw data that's going in to your R analysis and getting a, a nicely structured report um, out of the other end. <laughs> um, so I must admit that I've never really tinked around too much over, uh, over other ways of getting um, integrated output from, from R, but I, I, in my opinion the main advantage of this over code with ample annotations is that you get nice inline formatting, you get, your, you get your code and your output and your figures in particular uh, formatted inline. So, so in many ways, it's a, it's a convenience function for me um, being able to use these things. Um, and so, you know, PDFs are very easy to share uh, nowadays, so being able to get a PDF, essentially the click the button, is, a, is very useful. Um, just a little bit of uh, terminology. So the woven document that we're going to end up with is really the end result of all of this output. So in the instances I'm going to show you, it's a PDF file, but because we'll talk about later, you know, if you want to so that's the document that has the interspersed text, code, and console output. If you do have um, a, a .rnw file, so the source file for creating a woven document from, you can also do what's called tangling the document, which essentially goes through and pulls out all of the chunks of R code and puts them in a separate file. So if you want a standalone file that just has all the data analysis bits, uh, you can do that as well. Um, in terms of times when that might be useful, uh, it might be, for instance, if you've got a, a data summary report where you need to create a whole set of derived variables, for instance, instead of just sort of copying and pasting over the bits of code that you need, you can sort of dynamically uh, 
hit uh, to generate all of the R code from your original file and then use that as the basis for your uh, subsequent analysis. Um, I've already gone over this really, so times times when uh, woven documents are useful. Um, so I don't think there's necessarily anything more to add um, on that. So I'm just going to show you a file with almost zero statistical uh, content uh, in it. So this is um, the file I'm about to show you is a data clean report from a from an HRC project that um, I've been involved in. Uh, so just to give you a very quick proceed of the study, it was a study uh, looking at informal coercion among um, psychiatric care. Um, Patients. So these are people who have been seen in the community uh, and asking them questions about whether they felt that they had been informally coerced as the, as the psychiatric people term, so in other words, non-legal coercion to, um, to go on with treatment, to be told, well, you know, if you don't keep up with your treatment, it's possible that you might um, you know, lose your, uh, your accommodation or your benefit, maybe stop your work. Um, so in terms of why I created this document, at one level, we needed to go through all the data that had been entered by the, the research assistants and check it was all there and it was all making sense. Um, and also, uh, the project leader wanted just some simple univariate summaries of uh, all the responses um, in the survey. So, just give two seconds. So, this is the document here. Um, so at the moment, this full report runs to something like uh, 174 pages. So in the days of uh, iPads and whatnot, it was actually very handy just to have a quick, easy PDF uh, version of this uh, document. One nice thing that, uh, that Sweden Nittar does is that um, when you have section headings, it also gives you uh, quick links to those, which is really handy from uh, sort of browsing around uh, the document. So this is relatively, this is, this is not a particularly attractive looking uh, document, but the main aim was to get a lot of information uh, into an easily handleable document. And also you can see some bits and pieces in here where we've had a meeting about you know, what are the problems with this particular set of data and what we're going to do about that, so we can document all that uh, in one place and add to the document uh, later on and reprocess the as well. So what are all those other files there, James? Is that part of in this one here, these are. Uh, I'll show you one of these. Um, I'll show you one of these now. What I what I actually did was because this was a this was quite a long survey. It was like ran to about sort of thirty or forty pages, A four pages of um, you know coding sheets for for the responses. I actually worked through it in sections. So I actually made one file for each section and stuck them together at the end, just so that I could maintain my sanity in uh, doing the, the coding. Um, and then I stuck them together um, at the end. Um, I might leave this for Tech to talk about. Uh, in a minute, but you can just see here there's a mixture of um, uh, latex commands. So this is just plain text to, uh, to come through. Uh, and then down here are the uh, commands for calling a few functions and whatnot. Uh, down here. Um, yeah, and there are a lot of files because there are a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. this um, and this is actually relatively clean. Once you, once you run Sweep in a particular folder, you end up with all the auxiliary files and whatnot and text versions of your files and so on. So it can, it can actually get pretty messy from your folder point of view. Um, so just to talk, I'm not, I'm not going to talk very long about Sweeve versus Nitter. Sweeve is uh, reasonably old now. I don't, I don't actually spend too much time trying to tie down entire dates, uh, uh, to uh, tie down accurate dates to things. But Sweeve predates Nitter by by quite a few years. In general, the overall process for laying out files is the same. So if you've learned one, you'll be able to switch easily to uh, to the other. And take might just have a few words to say. There are, if you have used Sweeve before but want to convert a file to Nitter, there are some quite nice um, uh, functions in the Nitter package that will convert document uh, for you as well. So from a programming point of view, the main differences are in the, uh, the file header, so you do need a few more options in the LaTeX file header, header like the Sweebox um, option we saw before, than in this R, and in the R code chunk header, so I'll leave that for tech to talk about uh, in a second. But if you want to hide the output from a particular chunk of code, there's just a different way to specify that in this R than in Sweebox. My understanding is, is that uh, firstly, that our things be more modular than Sweep, so more easily expandable and sort of uh, fixable in that respect. But also, some of the, uh, the chunk heading options, um, the, the way that you specify those options is more in line with standard um, R practices. So, if you're passing the character string as an option, uh, that needs to be in 
inverted commas, whereas in Swede, for instance, if you want to hide a particular section of results, you just have to hide in the plain text. The, um, the main difference that I found between the two is that, uh, is that NITAR handles figures uh, a lot more easily than, uh, than Swede does, um, which I think is a major advantage, actually. Um, in fact, if you, if, you, if you just run some relatively plain Swede code where you're drawing some figures in your sections and don't have a, a header option to say, hey, include the figures in the section, you won't get any figures in it, and it's the kind of thing. It can lose you a fair few minutes um, when you're starting out with these things. So getting set up is actually pretty pretty quick. You need perhaps obviously your R installation. You also need a tech installation. And um, I've just used uh, MicTech uh, for this, uh, just out of parochial. It's what I first used, and I haven't really needed any more complex since. Um, so that's a Windows environment you're working on, is it? I, it is Windows, yes. So if people do have comments on what works better for other Something clients. else is you, you, you could use in Linux. Yes, I, I, I think it's, it's just basically you need LaTeX up and running on your app. Uh, yep. Text live. Text live. Text live. Text live. Yeah. Sorry, uh, obviously sitting in front of my computer, I'm thinking about people. other people sitting in front of different computers um, as well. Um, you, you sometimes might need some additional tech packages that um, uh, the first time you compile. So as for most things, if you're running uh, on a system where you need admin privileges to install things, it does tend to lead to a few problems uh, with some things. Uh, Suite is part of the base R installation in the utils package. Um, that are needs to be uh, installed uh, separately, but just the same as any other package. So this is possibly a moot question for most of the people in the audience, having used LaTeX before. Um, I think you can actually get by in terms of making a structured document uh, with Natal or Suite with relatively minimal latex. If you know how to specify a section heading and subsection headings, um, and basically put in the bold font or italics on particular bits of text, you can probably do most of the things that you want. If you, know, if you already know how to make tables, you can make things look nicer and so on and so forth. Um, but I think really the section commands are really the most useful. Um, I just gonna mention uh, RStudio relatively quickly, although we'll, do, we'll show our examples within RStudio. The main reason to mention our studio is that actually it's it's got some nicely integrated NetR and Sweep functionality in it. So there's a if you're working with a .rnw suffix file, there'll be a nice button on it that we'll see in a second called Compile PDF. Um, I do have some notes in a second about how to man for those of you who don't use or don't want to use our studio about how to manually compile a Sweep file. You basically, in the case of Sweep, I haven't actually got the notes in on NetR because I've never done it before. In the case of Sweeve, you simply call Sweeve on the .rnw file <coughs> to run. That creates a .txt file from that, and then you run LaTeX on the .txt file, which you can pull from within uh, um, by, by content. And other nice things about RStudio are that if you ask for a new file for a, um, for a Sweeve document, um, that will automatically put the headers uh, in there for you, so you can basically just start typing between those and start putting your code changes in. So it's relatively quick to do. And if you are a LaTeX newbie, then you can um, you can uh, get some drop-down menus for different things. So if you can't remember what I need to use to get an uh, underline or bold or whatnot, you can just select that from the drop-down menu and, uh, and fill in the space between the two uh, braces. One other useful point, which is possibly not true of running this in, in just the R GUI, is that within R Studio, when you compile your document, it actually compiles it in a, in a separate environment. So if your code that you've got in your .rnw file isn't standalone, so if you've done an intermediate step in the console and you've forgotten to, to put that into your .rnw file, then it's not going to work and it will fall over. Um, you may not spot that because it may be an error file hidden somewhere in your PDF file, but it's not going to, it's not going to use uh, objects that are in the standard uh, environment. Um, and I think that's quite a useful feature as well. I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Tech now to show you the uh, uh, so Tech's got a, a quick example in uh, Sweep and then a quick one in NetR um, as well. Uh, the NetR example um, uses stuff from the survival package. So this is, this is an analysis that we've been doing ourselves, but um, hopefully it also means that the file documents um, are going to be uh, easily reproducible in English. So I'll just start with my um, So I'm Jack. I'm not really a biostatistician um, for that long. I haven't been, sorry. But uh, I'm learning um, slowly. Um, 
James and another, another guy. Um, I did start with using uh, LaTeX separate from R, doing master's thesis and PhDs and stuff. Sorry, one piece. And, <laughs> and um, but I was doing it in Linux, so it wasn't really uh, related to this at all. Um, but I started the sweep after James said, just try it's cool. So um, quickly I learned, you know, it was pretty easy, not easy, but um, enjoyable to learn um, from a programmer's point of view. And then just recently, the, after you know, having to have to talk, not have to talk, um, volunteering to talk, um, I learned mid R today. Um, it's pretty fun. But um, I'm officially switched over to mid R from today. But I'll show you a uh, simple, that's my intro. So that was my, um, I'll just start with a, uh, see if this works. So. so this is the Swede. I'll just do the Swede one first. Try to do it in five minutes. Um, hopefully everything works. So, okay, so you know all the stuff that James has talked about. Um, so, some people don't know LaTeX, but you just have to kind of <laughs> pretend that you do. Um, so, there's certain packages that you need to run the script uh, in LaTeX, and those come at the top. Um, I won't really go into what they are, but just, just um, things that you need to do specific things. I'll just give it that. Um, the actual document starts, sorry, that's uh, begin document. And um, I'll try to do one section at a time. At first, I'll show what it gives you. So this is, um, I'll show you what this magical button does. It says compile PDF. Um, and if you press it, it does all this stuff. And shows you your PDF. Uh, and that's not an error, that's a, an image. But, um, yes, yeah. so oh, sure. is that okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that's the top. Um, so everything is quite formatted nicely. Uh, you can change it in your own way as you want, but certain things can be dynamically changed, like the, like the date, for example. You know, if it's if you just write today, I think it puts in the date of today. You don't have to type in the same percent. Um, and uh, that's one thing. Um, just start here. This is just one thing that I found troublesome before. Um, it was yesterday. <laughs> um, but you can't have spaces in your uh, RNW file, like the name. Um, I don't know. You know what? Uh, probably just when you call it things on command line, spaces to be coordinated. Okay. Something in the background is not liking the spaces. So, you have to make a file that's uh, no spaces or you know, uh, subs, those things, underscores. Yeah. So that's what I usually do. Um, I'll just quickly go back to the here. Uh, so this is the uh, where the bar point starts, and between these uh, sort of brackets, you can put in a few options and options that it changes the output of what you see in the PDF. So, echo f, echo f. So basically, the, it shows kind of the output of the, uh, the command, but not the command itself. Okay. So, the two bits here, sorry, it's not, I'm uh, not talking well. The first line is just some, that's a concatenate. Cat. You're doing a great take. Oh, <laughs> don't, say, don't worry about it. You're doing good. Okay. Um, so the cat, which I forget what it's in. But um, it's just text within R. Okay. And then uh, it's just for your uh, new font. But then I guess the default font is Times or something. But from here, from the make sure, blah, blah, is the, uh, the actual latex command. So we don't have to go into what I wrote. but. So, uh, so the R code ends at the at mark, um, and then after the at mark, you put in text, but you write it in a way 
you can write text, um, just normal text, but it'll be a bit boring, a boring but not cool. So if you write it in with special, uh, what do they call them? Latex commands, I guess, that start with a slash, backslash. Um, it makes things bold or italic or really big or really small. Um, okay. And this is, uh, is this okay? Yeah. Uh, okay. You're doing good. Okay. Um, so I guess we can start with just a really simple example of some data I took from the internet. Um, just looking at height and weight of people. Not that interesting, but simple. Um, so the first thing you need is uh, a few packages, of course. Um, these are the two that I have to use for this example. Um, and you read in the data, you show the data. So up, say it's up to this, this chunk here, this chunk here. You read in the data and you show the data. And so it doesn't, yeah, yeah, so it shows uh, the, sorry, it, it hides the results, so it doesn't show. Yep, yep, sorry, sorry, it says results hide there. Um, but the next part, say, for example, this one, or I'm sorry, here, this one has nothing in between the brackets. So it's basically, I guess it's the default where it shows everything. So it shows the command and the output. So it's just the first four rows of people that are taller than 70 inches. So that's the, so that's the four lines here. Um, and then just one thing on the other side, but uh, writing LaTeX, the word LaTeX, it's, it's a function in LaTeX, and it gives you this cool, cool thing. I don't know, trademark thing. Um, so, I did uh, do some simple steps, I guess. Uh, um, so I did convert things to more comfortable uh, units. So centimeters, or, yeah, meters, and kilograms. Just creating things with the data frame and calculated EMI. So this thing here is a equation. If you know LaTeX, it's easy, but it's this part here. So you just put in an equation, and so this is. I guess you can write it in text, but it'll look horrible. Um, so you use like a fraction command and other uh, curly bracket functions, and then it makes a uh, you know a little seg segment for the formula. And cool enough, it gives you the number that to make reference to. So this number one here is uh, automatically put in, and uh, so that's a really different thing. Um, moving on, we'll just go to the figures, I guess. There's two ways to put in figures, or there's more, but I'll just show you two. Um, the first one is just showing output of what you see in R. So that is this section here, subsection. Um, this chunk here is, uh, it doesn't show the command you type in, so echo equals false. And figure equals true means you can see the actual figure that's in the uh, the R plot window, I guess. So that would be this. And I didn't set any options, so it's big. It's big. Um, it's a little big, but um, that's the default. Thing, what you should, what you see. In R. If you did want to set options, do you put them in, in between the the? Um... Yeah. So you can put it in between. You can put it in there. Can you put it in sweep? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's been ages since I've used sweep to change. So you can change like global settings for figures. In Nitar, 
which is a lot easier generally for figures. You can set a global option for figure size and then a chunk specific option. So if you only right. want to have like a two by two size image in a particular chunk, you can set that just in the, the header for the chunk. Okay. I'm sure you probably can in Sweep as well. Yeah, you probably width and height can go in there. Oh. So cool. It's it's um you can type in. So the cool thing about R Studio is that it'll help you if you're in trouble. So like now. Uh, you can look. Oh, sorry. Oh. So cool. something like that. Yeah. But let's say we don't do that. Um, but in NITR, it's quite relative. It's a little easier than Sweeple. This isn't the way I usually do the figures. Um, it's the next uh, part here. So, yeah, so that's that. Um, you can actually put. Yeah, the way I do it is I export it to a PDF and then I read it back in, which is a bit tedious, but I think um, NITAR does it more elegantly. You got a reference to a, to a fig. So yes. A, 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 you got backslash rec fig yep. history. Do you need to define what is fig history or does... Yep. Um, so I'll show you in a second. Okay. It's not history, it's histogram, but it's okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but it, it's okay if you have the reference command before the actual um, figure. Um, so the actual uh, LaTeX part is here. Uh, a few commands here and there, but basically it's, I exported, sorry, I should say this first. This is the R command uh, using the Pyro package to export PDF as some height width uh, dimension and that's exported as a PDF, but it doesn't open in our studio. Um, but then you read that back in with this uh, begin figure command. And I just, yeah. So you can put a caption in, which is like just the title. And this label, just what you asked, the label is this. You don't have to use colon, or it's just a good standard thing. But if you put in a label inside the inside that segment, that section, and if you make reference to it up here, it'll give you the same, you know, figure one, but I think it's figure one, um, in your output. So we'll take a quick look at the output for now. Okay, so we'll go down. So I set it as a different width and different height, obviously, so it's a little different there. But uh, here is figure one, and here, and oops, here, figure one. So they match, if you ever put a figure in between there, it'll change to two, something, something like that. And um, yeah, it changes dynamically. So that's pretty, uh, so the same thing, you can do the same thing with tables too. Um, tables is a little different because they're, it's text, but let's go back. I think I'm gonna <laughs> use up all my time on this week. Um, but, okay, so the table, let's say I want to just look at the summary of the data. And looks, uh, in R it looks like this, this segment here. Oops, you saw the, you saw the better version, but um, that's what you basically see in R. And it's fine, but um, if you want things that look a little better, uh, you can, it's not really better, cause it's not really, it's not really like, um, sorry, it's uh, this segment here. So this part uses a package called X table, or I think that's what it, how you read it, but it, it, uh, you can take a table output, and then if you use the X table command, it makes it into a LaTeX uh, format, so it ends and slashes and all that. So you don't have to uh, intervene in any way. Um, and so, this chunk here, uh, the options are you don't want to see the man, so echo f, echo false, and then this result equals text is another option where it shows the text, text is for LaTeX, but it shows the LaTeX uh, output and then treats that as a LaTeX you know, rather than R, R language. So this output here, this output here is 
uh, I guess it's the standard, not the standard, it's like the default uh, layout for a table. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> So this simple model here is a bit silly, but I'm sure everybody knows what happens. But um, I'll just talk about, uh, so I already talked about grade. So I wanted to see what the relationship was between weight and height, just to be simple. Um, and so this model here, in summary of the model, I can't really tell what happens, but so it shows you the command, it shows you the output here, and lucky enough, get positive beta there and significant stuff like that. So you can show all of the output by default, or you can save summary bracket m as an object and just show separate parts of it if you want. Um, so you can put the whole thing. Yeah, it's funny because I, I made an example data set and it didn't work, um, not work, it was uh, not significant, so it started from scratch. Um, okay, next bit is, oh yeah, just, just the next thing about the model is uh, it's the same thing. Um, the, uh, the figure for um, diagnostics, and I just did it this way, the, uh, using the Cairo package and reading it back in. Here. Is there a reason why you do that? I just like it. Okay. Um, there is. There are, there's, there's one, of, one of the reasons is if you want to use the nice LaTeX environments, I think this is the only way you can achieve that in Sweeve. In that, uh, you can pass header chunks where you give captions and labels to things, which is possibly a little bit tidier um, to do. But yes, so I, I liked it because I used to use Sweeve till this morning. Okay. And um, yeah, I just, I just prefer it this way. Uh, you'll see that Nitar is a little, a little better in that way. In that way. And that's actually it. It's, it. It took a bit long to go through all that stuff, but you have your nice uh, QQ plot and all that stuff. I wonder if all your plots come from your page. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 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 Y
actually had, um, you were changing your data each month to produce a report, and you yeah. wanted to say which class had the most observations. Yeah. Could you embed that in the sentence saying the class with the most observations? This was was oh, I see. Um, I don't know the answer to that question off the top of my head, but someone else talks about <laughs> 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 uh, the The command is uh, slash s expression, and inside the curly brackets, you've got any R and whatever the R output from that is, we'll just be dropped into that place. So it looks like we're using it. I'm just going to show you, um, in the interest of time, I'm just going to show you very quickly some of the differences in it uh, compared to a sweep document. So all the stuff at the top is basically the same, the, the header stuff. All of the stuff underneath in terms of the LaTeX, as you might expect, is the same. Um, so this is just a table that I made up personally here. So one thing you will see, this chunk of code here is drawing a, a Kappa Meyer plot, so it's fitting a <coughs> uh, and it's plotting it. And so I've, I've, I've named my code chunks in here, but there are no further options needed in this hour to get your figures out. Uh, one other problem <coughs> uh, with Sweeve is that each chunk of code can only have one figure output from it. Uh, NITAR, you can have as many figures as you like in a, in a chunk of code. Um, other than that, maybe there's not much more to say about NITAR other than that personal <coughs> is a lot easier to deal with. Here you have the equivalent of specifying height and width for figures in a particular chunk. You tempted us. You tempted us earlier on by talking about the sweep options um, uh, command up the top. Um, what's that about? Uh, good question. It makes it an importance file, which adds another file to my folder, which I have to delete later on, and I don't have to put it in the desired file. And that's about as far as my understanding. Goes. Okay. About, it's about it's something to do with synchronizing your two files that you have, but I didn't actually look it up to see what it what it did. Okay. But you don't. But that, so that's one thing about Nitar. Uh, let me just change this over up here. Um, is that you don't need that in your uh, you don't need that in your header. So this is essentially. I just go. Oops. Wrong type of new file. Uh, so this is the new document here. So you only need these three lines for. So, I mean, it's only one line less than that speed. But I think actually, in terms of the other options, actually <coughs> being able to have multiple figures per, per chunk that are, as a as a bit sort of more straightforward. Um, you can also, you know, I just scroll up to the appropriate point here. You can see in this header, um, I'm passing a caption for the figure uh, in this um, in this chunk uh, in the in the header. And you can you can pass a vector of um, of caption. So if you've got three figures in your section, you can pass caption one. As a vector, and those will be output, the, the figures will be numbered appropriately. So, from that point of view, it's a little bit more streamlined um, than perhaps uh, as could be. Can you, can you pass as an R variable? Um, I suspect so, um, partly because we tried to run something before and said it didn't know what the uh, hide object was. So, if you have specified what your, um, uh, what your captions are as an R variable, yes. I mean, uh, one of the main things about Nitar is it's supposed to be a lot more modular and tied into uh, to what's happening uh, within uh, um, I have a few more slides, thank you. One of which is an acknowledgement slide and one of which is a references slide. Um, I just put this slide up just to show you very quickly if you uh, if you want to manually compile a sweep file, um, then within R you can call sweep on that .rnw file. That will create the text file with the same file prefix, so if you've got myfile.rnw, we'll create this, running this command will create myfile.tech, um, and then if you basically, you can do this within an hour, you can then take the tech file elsewhere, um, and they take and, um, and compile it there, uh, the last command is to tangle the file. Um, we've already mentioned this, so these are really just notes on uh, bigger bits and pieces, so as I've said already several times, NITAR is considerably more straightforward than, uh, than Sweep. I'm still pretty sure that if you're plotting in ggplot, which, um, which if you like good figures, you probably are, that you need to print your ggplot object in the same way that if you're running ggplot within a loop, um, you need to print within that loop um, as well. To get that. Um, so we've already seen some of these options as well, so these are just notes really about things that you've already done. This is a note about x table, so to get a nice um, latex table from, uh, from an R object. So in Sweeve, if you want to use X table, 
Remember, in, in, if you call that in the R console, it will basically print out the commands that you need to create the, the LaTeX table. Um, so in Swede, you put in the header results equals text, and it will then interpret that code as being text, and the equivalent for NITR is results equals as is. Uh, and so if you then run that print text table command down here, that will take the LaTeX output from each table and form it. And I only really started looking at uh, child documents um, today, which you were kind of alluding to uh, earlier, so I just put a link up to child documents here. But it is possible to compile uh, several documents into one um, as well. So we do the acknowledgements. Thank you to the researchers. Um, these work has formed the basis for our practical examples and uh, inspired uh, the need to get something that easily gets output uh, into a, uh, a shareable um, format. Uh, so I just had a few slides at the end. I mean, if you want help on LaTeX things and R things and NIT R things and Swede things, and you know the specific problem you want to solve, I mean, cross cross validated, um, not cross validated specifically, but they, sorry, the Stack Overflow um, series of websites are really good. So there are text ones um, as well as uh, programming ones that deal with R. Um, as you've seen, R Studio simplifies the compiling options uh, somewhat, so it does streamline the process. I feel. Um, and the other main resource that I've used in terms of um, LaTeX over the last few years has been uh, the, one of the wiki books on LaTeX and some quite good stuff on the structure of documents and so on. So I think um, we may or may not have time for a few more questions, if there are more um, questions. I found uh, stuff uh, this week, uh, recently with edit of all backup or format or something like that. And if you use that one, and can you use it to look at the picture of R and LaTeX for just to do uh, real-time editing on like Microsoft Word. Uh, it's a system that shows two windows and top window shows document as it, as it printed, and you can change bold and italic and do whatever you want in Microsoft uh, Word type patterns and so on. And the bottom line, bottom window shows then Okay. That looks very nice. It seems to be the only visible editor. Can anybody use it? Mm -hmm. I think when I started using LaTeX, I, I tried using a GUI environment for some, for some bit. I mean, you could certainly use that and copy and paste your LaTeX sections over to our studio if you wanted to be one sort of integrated uh, solution there. And um, to show you, there's this little format button up here for LaTeX. So these different options up here, so sections, subsections, bold, italic, quote, and bullet list, and so on, do at least give you relatively quick access to the command if you're not familiar with the commands. But once, you know, once you know a few of the major commands, do it. Is there a person who needs to go to the next and change the information? Good question. If I had one of those people, it might make life a bit uh, easier in some respects. Um, I don't know the answer to that. So, with respect to that, Paul Marl at Auckland University's got a project underway specifically to address that problem. Um, it, it's, I don't think it's solved. Not export the word and then back the word to LaTeX? No, actually, he, he wants to go through marketing. <laughs> but yeah, he's, um, he, it, it's, a, there's, no, there's no easy solution for that. Okay. There was an R page called R2 Word, R2 Word, R2 Word, R2 Word, R2 Word, R2 Might be easier if the reader writes a document and it's sent it off for easy. Yeah, proofreading or any comments right. later on, things like that. Yeah. But that's just for um, it's not as. Uh, yeah, I guess from a, from a circularity point of view, if you're creating these documents to have something that's kind of standalone and reproducible, yeah. I mean, one option would be you could hand off the text file once it's created to the other person um, and they could, they could edit it in this other environment. That then the issue is just reintegrating that back with the uh, original mm -hmm. stuff. So I don't, I, it's possible that you may actually be able to open up this document and it would handle the text file and just not know what to do with the R code and then just ignore those sections. So we might be able to try. Or it might be. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, James and Jack.